All right, so back at it again. So now, uh, quick quick summary here. I won't bore you guys to death with uh, with the trip and everything like that. But I will say uh, it was a trip to a remote cabin, as I do every year. Uh, it's I find it's good for me to recharge mentally and refocus. And this year I wanted to, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm at a a turning point a little bit. I feel like we've grown prospect here into a position where I can take the next really big step forward. A, a huge part of that was in the weeks leading up to my trip, I actually, for the first time, earned the uh, the access for Dallas Prospect, something I built, not just something where, hey, I write for this website and through that website, I will get access to the team. No, something I built here with Dallas Prospect that you helped me build here got access to the Mavericks throughout the year. That That's incredible to actually have access to the team, to their you know, the press conferences, their post-game shows, their pre-game press conferences, all of that. And that's going to completely change the equation of the kind of content that I'm able to put out moving forward. Because now I can clip out, you know, quotes and video and things like that from post-game press conferences. I can use it and implement it into the show. I can go more in depth with things like that. Whereas right now, this is just something where everything's kind of surface level. And I don't mean that to disparage my work or my content or anything like that, but I've always wanted to go down into that next level. And this affords me that ability because now I can get a question in to the players. I can talk to some of the players or coaches or things like that. And, you know, things are a little different this year with, uh, with COVID and everything being more zoom driven. So it's different. Um, Last season when I went to a game, I covered it before the pandemic and everything like that. And I was actually in person in the locker room and all of that. But I was there writing for somebody else. It was one of my side kind of freelance works I did. And, you know, I enjoy doing that, but I wanted to do something myself, something that I build. And so getting there with Prospect for the first time, and I've been trying for three years since I started Prospect, I've been trying. And I tried to point to the work I did for other sites and uh, the access and all of that, whether it was articles getting picked up on Bleacher Report, whatever. I tried any way I could to justify my work and justify me specifically to get that access, and I could never get it. And so to finally get that was, it was incredible. It was, it was a validation that everything I've been doing, all the hard work, is taking me where I want to go. And now it's my job to actually dig in and, you know, produce that content to actually realize it and now maximize what this affords me. And so I went on this trip kind of trying to plan out the future of Dallas Prospect because I see this as a launch point. I see this as an as an opportunity to really move forward with uh, what we're doing. And so I think what I want to do is, well, here, before I get into that, on the trip, uh, you know, I, I talked before in the in the video I did right before the trip, kind of my goodbye for now thing. I go totally off the grid. I turn, I literally turned off my phone and left it in a drawer for the entire week. And I went hiking a lot. I, you know, sat out on the the back deck of the cabin just kind of staring off into the the wilderness and listening and looking up at the stars any cliche thing you can think of for getting out and being on your own but really i just wanted the time and space to decompress and to think and uh i, I think that was it was really good because you clear your head and then you start to kind of see things more clearly and in my setup I kind of came to some decisions. I'm going to lean more into prospect than I ever have. And I'm also going to work harder than I've ever worked. I'm going to accelerate things on multiple fronts, including school. I was on pace before to finish up 
um, still had about a year left. I'm going to accelerate now to finish up in the summer with my degree, the sports journalism cert, uh, certs and all that. And uh, I'm going to be diving in in full. So I'm accelerating that, but I'm also going to be doing more prospect content and I'm going to be investing more time, energy, money, whatever. And I'm going to make sure that I can produce better content and things that I've thought of doing, dreamed of doing, planned to do, that's been sitting on the back burner. Some of you know different projects I've pitched and talked about wanting to do and even starting to work on, but then kind of backed away from. I'm not going to hold back anymore because the future of prospect is this. Post-game shows will most, most always follow the day after now, like the morning after, just like this, just like I went live today, probably earlier actually. Uh, Post-game shows are going to follow then because I do have a young daughter and a family that I have to, you know, take care of and spend time with and things like that. And it's difficult to be up till midnight doing post-game shows. And I also don't feel like it gives me the depth that I want to talk about it, especially if I'm going to be doing uh, these Maverick post-game shows and stuff like that, not post-game shows, but like post-game press conferences and getting clips and doing all that to prepare for the following morning show. I need time to do that. So what I can promise you, yes, it's moving to the following morning instead of the format that you've come to know, but it will be better in-depth content I will have video, I will have audio, I will have so much more than I can offer you in terms of content and depth. In the rare cases where for some reason I'm not able to cover that game, I will have probably any providing content on that. He'll he's doing his own, he's creating his own YouTube channel. He's still going to be affiliated with Dallas Prospect, but he's kind of been I don't know if you would say like learning from me or whatever uh, on the basics of everything, but he's been doing some kind of test runs and sending me the footage of his post game shows. And I've been kind of giving him feedback and advice, everything from the stream layout to the actual content of what he's talking about points he's making. He's, he's doing great. He really is. And he's going to be doing his channel. I don't know the name of his channel yet, but when it's time, I will absolutely plug it. Uh, I, I'm happy to see him kind of building up this thing and building his own platform as well because it, it does give you a, a degree of freedom. And I know that's something he's been wanting to do, so I'm happy that he's going to get that opportunity. But uh, if for some reason I can't cover a, a game for the first segment of the show the following day, I will have any impact that or impact uh submit that content and it will still come through prospects so you will still get a post game show uh it'll just come from any and it'll be in more in that 15 to 20 minute window kind of like the post game shows i was doing last season and even the very start of this season so what i'm going to do with prospect in addition to what i've already detailed with the post game uh access and everything like that the zoom access i will have my first games of that for this season be the 15th, so just next week, just after my birthday, uh, the 20th and the 23rd, that is at Milwaukee, that is at Indiana, and that is against Houston. I will have access for those three games, which means I will be up late getting clips, getting audio, prepping them for the following morning in which I will run a live show just like this. We're going to start three times a week right now, early on, three times a week, we're going to run live shows and we are, uh, we are going to basically um, segment things out. So the first thing, if, if there was a game the night before, the first segment's always going to be post game. If there's you know other stuff where I can go in deeper, perhaps today, if I had more content to talk about it right now, I would go into the story about Maxi Kleba entering 10 to 14 day isolation for protocols. I would go into that and that would be its own segment. If you jump on the live stream like this, catch it live, you're basically getting a window of the entire live stream as you see now. 
will be uploaded to the old Dallas Prospect Live podcast. I'm going to resume adding the shows from that uninterrupted entire podcast thrown over there. Feeling Dangerous will also still exist, my other podcast, but that's going to be reserved for more unique original content and not just taking audio from videos I do here on Prospect and then repurposing them there. So follow both podcasts. The 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 hour to two hour, however long the show is, won't catalog to the channel. What will happen is I'm also simultaneously recording this. I'm going to split it up, segment it, and you'll get individual videos uploading over the course of the day. So if you miss the live show in the morning, not a problem. You're going to get the following content throughout the day. So you're not going to miss anything. But let's say like one of the subjects I had and was going to talk about was the maxi story. All right, well, if that's the only thing you were interested in, rather than having to click an hour to two hour video and, you know, click and drag through it, try and find when I actually started talking about it, you can just see later that afternoon, oh, hey, here's the 12 minute segment he did talking specifically about that and the fallout from that and how that impacts the rotation and things like that. You'll have all that access. It's just going to be segmented. So you're going to be getting more content on the channel than ever before. At least you have the three live streams and then each show will have three to five segments. So doing the math like that, you know, you're going to get at least 12 pieces of content essentially a week. If you're doing, uh, if I expand that then later down the road to five days a week, then you're going to get up to 30 pieces of content a week. Like this is just, how it is. If, if you got five days a week, five segments, and the five live streams themselves, you'll have access to all of that. Now, the the opening maybe 10 minutes and closing 10 minutes of each show, uh, those aren't going to be included in those videos. It's not like there's going to be the intro animation every single time. That's for the, the live stream itself, or, or maybe like independent, different produced videos I do. But you'll get that content. Um, and those opening, closing 10 minute segments. That's going to be like an open Q and a session. Basically, if you guys got questions you want to ask, you just tag at the Dallas prospect in the chat. I'll see it. Um, you know, th for this to take the next big step, we're going to have to, if you love the channel, if you support what we're doing, we're going to need to like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. Any Mavs fans you know, share it. It doesn't matter. Like we've got, we've got followers all over the world. If you've got other Mavs fans that you know who might be interested in what we do, share it. But we're also, you know, while, while I'll still keep my content primarily Mavericks, I am in this format going to open some things up a little bit where I can step into some of these other areas that I do have the knowledge and that I have covered these other teams before and things like that. But Mavericks will still be my bread and butter, as it were. So never fear there. Just understand that as we open things up and expand, we're going to, um, you know, we're going to test the waters a little bit and see how we can further build and grow this audience. Uh, as another thing you can do to support the channel, I've got it listed there. You can support Prospect on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the Dallas Prospect. You can also become a member on YouTube as well. We've got a couple members, I think, already. And if you guys support us like that, you can also hit the super chat up here. And I think I've got it even set up where if you do a super chat donation, it'll actually read your message and all that specifically uh, over the stream. So... You can do that. Anything is greatly, greatly appreciated as we try to grow this thing and move forward. But if you if you do a super chat, you know, the thing will read your question and all that, but those will probably just human nature take some degree of priority just because it's like, oh, well, if so and so kicked me a buck or two or something like that to to get their question or point or whatever across, then yeah, I'm you know, I owe them in a sense, I'm obligated 
to take that question or whatever. But if you just tag at the Dallas prospect, it'll highlight your comment in orange for me. I'll see it and I'll be able to uh, take on all of that. But uh, in addition to these live shows, because no, these live shows and these individual video uploads are not all that I'm doing. I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be dusting off some content ideas from the past. There's going to be original content as well that I've toyed with in the past. And I've always tapped the brakes because I felt like I, I was like, I'm not good enough at this yet. I don't know what I'm doing exactly yet. And I, I think I, I bought into this mentality that until this mentality that until I reached a point where everything looked studio like, like my production value was like, Oh, I want it to be good enough to look like a, you know, a middle tier production company or something like that, or studio space until I get there. I can't do it. Cause I don't want my content looking cheap. You know, it, that's a defeatist mentality because it holds you back from different things you can try and you learn by doing. And so it's like, you know, make the content. Don't like, you're not fooling anyone into thinking that you're some high grade studio space. You're a dude standing in or sitting in front of a blue wall in your office. Uh, it's a small office space at the front of your house. You're not fooling anybody. Y yeah. You've got some decent equipment, but it's not like you've, it, it's not like you've got some huge budget to do all this stuff. Like embrace where you're at and continue to put out new content uh, as much as possible and just let you guys see. What do you think? Do you guys dig the new stuff that's coming out? Great. But anyway, there's going to be a lot more original content coming out as well. It will still be, of course, uh, sports-centric, Maverick-centric predominantly. But I'll let you guys see. If you guys remember the old TPN skits we did, uh, where I worked with Sean and Josh from the Sports Fury, and we did the whole uh, DDP auditions for a TPN anchor role thing, that kind of skit. I'm going to, I'm going to bring back stuff like that, but I'm going to do it in a more controlled way, and my technical prowess, as it were, is light years, light years better than it was when I did that video a year and a half ago, whenever that was, I mean, it's night and day, you guys. And not like I'm trying to say it's going to be like production company value stuff, but it's substan It's going to be substantially better than that stuff was, and it's going to be better realized. So I'm going to roll out content like that. You guys are going to be getting a ton of content from me because in my mentality, I'm going to make this full-time I'm going to find a way to make this full time. Three to five shows a week, live shows. If you miss the live show, don't sweat. You'll still get the, the individual segments posted throughout the course of that day. That means you're getting three to five videos per day on the days we have shows. And you're going to get individual segments or uh, content as well retrospectives, things of that nature. You're going to get more, basically everything that I've wanted to eventually offer you through Prospect, you're going to get all of that and more. And we're going to grow this thing. We're going to take the next steps. I want to bring in regular guests. And when I say regular guests, I mean like a guest a week. That's my ultimate goal. I'm going to bring in Sod as often as I can to talk Mavericks or Stars or, you know, even Cowboys. I'm going to bring in James. I'm going to bring in any. I'm going to bring in Sean or Josh from the Sports Fury. I'm going to bring in regular guests. And they're not the entire show. They'll be here a segment, maybe two. But we're going to open things up and we're going to start treating this thing like we are a full-time, full-produced show. And uh, we're going to see where that takes us. So... I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the, the chat what you guys think of kind of what I'm laying out here. But 
the idea is I want to be able to fill that role of the sports journalist with the analysis and post game shows and all that depth for you. But I also want to be the guy you can come on here and, you know, talk sports a little bit more casually as well and be able to focus on some of these other creative projects and things of that nature that I want to to do and to show you guys. So I'm curious to see what you guys think. Uh, let's see here. What's up, Alex? What up, Jack? Dallas Mavs, what up? Nice, great job, says Watson64. Appreciate it. Congrats. That's amazing. I th think you guys sent those in when I was talking about getting the credentials and the access to the Mavericks. I'm very, very pleased about that. And honestly, that's, that's like the first really big step where my mentality started to shift a little bit towards saying I can take a massive step forward because now I can get more depth and quality of content than I could get before. And I feel like I'm not having to go secondhand to, to get the content or the information. It's actually the work that I'm producing and that I'm doing all of that. And so it just kind of changed my mentality uh, towards it. And so once I had that, then I started thinking like, okay, well, I can take big steps in 2021 and... If there's, you know, I'm not going to do like a yearly mission statement or a hashtag or anything like that, but I will say my mentality for 2021 is to go from prospect to legend. From prospect to legend is my battle cry for 2021 because I'm going to give everything I've got to this. And if you guys will let me, and you guys are willing to support the show and the stream, it means everything, and it will open a lot of doors, and we can keep growing this community, and we can keep getting better content, and, uh, you know, the ultimate goal is to build this up where we have a small team. We have uh, a small team and a, eventually, actual studio space some kind of brick and mortar actual studio space where I'm not just running shows out of my office here, even though this works for small doses, uh, I'd like it to be kind of accenting content, but not the predominant, just everything runs from here set up like it is now. But, uh, if we get back to that and then we'll open it up, we'll bring in some, and I'm always going to be strategic in how I do this. I'm, I know viewership wise what it's like for viewers when you get bombarded over the head, whether it's ads or sponsors or whatever. But we're going to look to grow the show in, in that way as well, where maybe post-game shows, like this segment will be brought to you by so-and-so, and you'll have some something like that. Uh, it's never going to dominate the show. I'm not going to let it overtake things where it just is a beating. It's not going to be like even listening to radio where you'll have an ad uh, you'll have an ad break that's 10 minutes long. You're never going to have that here. The The biggest gap I'll ever take between segments on this show will probably be two to three minutes, and that's literally in my setup time. And in that, I will plug in either some of that original content I was detailing if it's really short or like, you know, borderline ad type stuff. I'll I'll drop that in there or I'll have something... Uh, to fill the space between segments when I jump back. But I'm never going to do uh, something that like, just beats you guys down or makes you think like, oh, he's just trying to rake in money or something like that. Like, I understand from a viewership level, uh, there's a balance you have to strike. So anyway, uh, doing a great job. Nothing wrong with giving priority to Super Chat. Let's see. Uh, I think you can bring players if possible, so we all give Dallas. You know, if I can get to players, that'll be phenomenal. I know it's harder than ever to get to players individually now. That is obviously, I'd love to be able to interview players on prospect, and maybe we'll get there at some point. You know, there's a there's a lot of guys who have gotten to that level just years of grinding, and you kind of just got to be around for a while. So. I might be able to get in some questions here and there in post-game press conferences and things like that, but it's going to take time to build up and get to the point where I have 
that same level of access. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, and uh, we'll start getting to a point in the next year probably where we have actual players on who jump on via Zoom or whatever, phone, whatever, and uh, we'll have we'll get some questions in, get some good back-and-forth Q&A stuff. Listen.